Throttle. Response is engine 5, engine 3, engine 1, ladder 3, ladder 2, rescue 1. We've got smoke showing. Division 1, you're on location, Mark 23, reporting smoke show on 727. Welcome to Job Talks Podcast. Our goal is to facilitate knowledge sharing. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests on the show belong solely to the people expressing them. We do not represent the departments, cities, or towns we work for. Welcome back, everybody. We are on Season 2, Episode 9. Thanks for joining us. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Like and subscribe. Oh. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, uh, got it out quick that time. That's pretty good. All right. You guys ready to dive into it? Let's do Let's it. Do it. I, honestly, I'm a little uncomfortable with this episode because I'm... Uh, Wildly, you're not, wildly you're not. out of shape right well, now. Well, you'll see. Right. We'll see what happens. You know? um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see if I. We'll see if I have shit to. On me for no, an dude. Hour. We'll also see if I have to re-enter the witness protection program because uh, I'm pretty opinionated on some yeah. things. <laughs> so uh, we'll Which see. It's going to go right up there yeah. with EMS in the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have the vest today, but I'm just going to disappear because people are going to be <laughs> upset when I hurt people's feelings. Nick, can you like edit him into a shadow with like a altered voice while he does this one? <laughs> yeah, right. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, so this one's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm going to preface this with two things. One. Uh, I'm a little opinionated on a couple of things, so if I have to re-enter the witness protection program, uh, there's a strong possibility. And two, uh, I'm not a fitness instructor, don't claim to be, don't have any professional certifications as far as fitness. I'm just a guy that likes to work out uh, and has taken a few things along the way. Definitely not an expert by any means, uh, but I thought it was an important topic and something that's ever-evolving in the fire service. So, As somebody who was once very fit and is now not so fit. You're still pretty fit. So we'll talk it's about the a, definition it's of... A good, it's a good episode to do. No, it's We'll it's talk good. about my it's definition good. of fitness. So this is a long quote, but it's a really good one. I saw it the other day, uh, and I literally screenshotted it, and I almost made the background on my phone. But anyway, so this is from GBRS Group, which um, they are two former um, Naval Special Warfare Development Group operators, otherwise known as SEAL Team 6. Uh, but they talk about why training is important. I thought this was very applicable to fire service. So they said, we use fitness to build the bond in the team. It fuels the passion to improve, to be open in showing weaknesses, and to motivate others to push further. We are trying to be as well-rounded as possible and to understand that sometimes your physical vessel is the only tool you have to use at the moment. You must be able to survive in your current condition, not the condition you train in, not your strong suits, the time when you're at your weakest, no tools, alone and vulnerable. Your physical condition is the, your first line of defense and the only one you carry with you 24-7. Train to be better, train to be professional. So I thought that was really good um, because I think at the end of the day, when you strip everything away, like your ability to perform is predicated on your physical capacity to do work. Um, so we'll dive into that. And I, I'm, I'm, I have some like some strong lines, but I'm not like my definition of fitness is a little bit broad of what I think it means to like be fit to do your job. Um, but another thing I wanted to highlight uh, is this Twitter. You know, we do. I'm doing a bunch of shout outs in this episode, actually. Um, so there's a Twitter handle, Unfucked Firefighter, uh, at Unfucked Fire. Uh, he has a lot of really good stuff. Um, and one of the things that they brought up was their non-negotiables, uh, which is doing some sort of high-intensity interval training two times a week, uh, lifting three to four times a week, uh, being in the sauna greater than two times a week, um, three deep breaths per tone, seven hours of off-duty sleep and then obviously if you're like um, doing meal prep one gram of protein per body so there's stuff here that i i think is applicable i don't think this is necessarily achievable for everyone uh, i don't have access to asana i certainly don't do i don't lift three to four times a week i probably prob probably like four um but especially with a newborn i don't do three or four i do four <laughs> yeah um <laughs> but i think like if you look at this conceptually right excellent i break it into different categories so there's the actual physical training component then there's the mental component of deep breaths right and then also making sure that you're getting appropriate rest and recovery are they are they go ahead i have a question about the deep breaths yeah me yeah. too is the first breath like this <sighs> 
Alex, is it the groan? <laughs> I do sigh a lot. Is it the pissed uh, off groan yeah. at the tone yeah. at three in the morning? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. depending on the time of the day. So yeah. That's what I was wondering is if, if <sighs> this is when he says per tone is like every time you get toned get out. Around, yeah. 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 So yeah. to bring down that. Like the box yeah. breaths. Yeah. So you can that's good. Like our use station, your ninja uh, techniques to control your heart rate. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. our station, the, the tone, if you're upstairs, you can't hear, but if you're on the apparatus floor, it's like it's like you're getting shot in the face with sound. Um, yeah. Upstairs, yeah. when we're laying in bed, it is awful and then yeah it's terrible yeah it scares the shit out of you when you're yeah. in deep sleep so but i think i think there's for me there's multiple components of fitness and my i guess like my fitness journey like i've i really started when i joined the army like i i wasn't like i didn't grow up being like an incredibly athletic person um i like i played sports but i i, I wasn't varsity anything other than the golf team but uh <laughs> Side note, everyone made varsity because we didn't have enough players. <laughs> uh, um, but I wasn't like a, I wasn't like an athlete. Like I've never characterized myself as an athlete until I got like into the army. And that's where I started to take fitness seriously. Um, and I was never, um, I wouldn't say like I was never, I, I was in really good shape at a few points, but I was never like the epitome of like fitness. Like I always had to like work hard. Like I was never like naturally talented um, running like 12s, like just because, um, I always had to like work hard to get to that level and stay there. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that, but so when I talk about why is fitness important in the fire service, right? So I have a bunch of questions I want to ask you guys and, you know, I'll, t I'll obviously offer my opinion on it, but why do you guys think in your opinion, why is fitness in the fire service so important? So when I talk about fitness, right, I don't just talk about like the fit, you have to have both the physical and the mental capacity. And like, I know you're always like, oh, like I'm not in the shape that I used to be. Right. But I have also seen you move the forcible entry door by yourself when it would take like two and a half berries to move that. So <laughs> like, I think, I think it's like relative, like some guys have like the cardio game strong and some guys just have like raw strength. Like I very much characterize you as someone, you're still very much fit to do your job. Right. Yeah. I felt so <clears throat> I had a fire yesterday Yeah, and I will say that, uh, like today I'm very sore from a bit a lot yeah. of like pulling ceilings and stuff yeah. and like so i think like f fitness in the fire service is important for a lot of reasons so like that's a, a super broad question in my opinion but like one is it makes it easier to do your job it primes you to be in a position to be successful when shit gets real so when it is time to make the rescue or you got to put the 35 up by yourself or whatever the case is but i think one of the biggest one one of the biggest ones and this is the one like I struggle with when I like want to be more fit than I am is that it prolongs your life because the fire service takes yep. a lot out of you physically, like cardiac issues, high blood pressure, mental stuff, all this stuff. So I think like aside from actually doing the job at in the moment is like being able to like retire and have like a healthy yeah. retirement. Longevity. Yeah. What about you, John? Yeah. It's simple for me. I don't want to think about how bad this sucks when I'm trying to do other things. Yeah. So I'm in like relatively good shape, not in the best shape in my life. I'm in relatively good shape. Yeah. And I know that when push comes to shove, I can go in and do the job. It will suck a little bit. It always does, especially because you get that adrenaline dump and things like that. I'm used to that from, you know, other sports, but you get you get on your second wind. I've always been a second wind fighter. You get on your second wind and then you cruise and you're good to go. And now you're now you're locked into the job and the things that you know the other things that you train for that you wanna, you know, um pick up and do. We've talked about this all a, a bunch is like getting a working knowledge. You can't get a working knowledge if you can't breathe. Yeah. If you know what right. I mean? It's like that's all you're concentrating on. I'm not concentrating on that when I'm in there. I'm I'm able to like start to think about other things because I'm not sucking wind, and that's that's right. all it is to me. With that said, if you have this extremely great working knowledge and you fall out of shape a little bit, I'm not going to say it's acceptable, but you know, you, you, if you well, we, different we, tools for different reasons. Yeah, and we right? we've yeah. I think we've alluded to that in a previous episode where I talked about like. Um, capacity versus working knowledge right mm -hmm. so right now i don't have 
a lot of knowledge in comparison to some of my peers. Yeah. But I'm able to supplement that with physical ability, yeah. right? To where like someone um, like Sam, for example, right, is like, or a guy that's in like the, the latter end of his career doesn't have to work as hard physically because they have this working knowledge of like, I can do it that I'm working smarter and not working harder. Absolutely. Where me, I'm over in the corner, like going a million miles a minute, like right. trying to keep up and like, right. Right. You can have a little bit more finesse. Right. Yeah. So I, I very much agree. So I, I have always like characterized like my fitness is like, it's transitioned over the years. Like I think when we're all younger, like everyone, like you used to be really being in a CrossFit, you as well. And jujitsu and like other, um, other disciplines but like i'm not trying to be like a beast anymore like i'm very much focused on like one having like a long healthy career and it's very much transitioned into injury prevention so i look at it as very much like i never want to be on the fire ground or at home with my family and not be able to physically do something that i want to do or like have a yeah. hobby that i can't physically right. perform right so i think that we'll talk about like rehab and prehab but I think that like for you, like you're physically able to do the job and now you're sore. And that's the one thing that we don't talk about and I'm not very good at is like foam rolling. Like, oh, like yeah. most people, honestly, like you're doing like what you did was a workout and you didn't stretch out or foam roll after right. it. I'm, I'm finding like as I get older, so, so <clears throat> just my like personal yeah. struggle or, or path or whatever is like I was very fit from the military. I got this job. Best thing it ever did for me is I was a pack a day smoker and yeah. I stopped smoking and I fucking ballooned, man. And so I've been like at a constant fight to get that off. And like I've had periods of good success and periods where I haven't been as successful. And, and what I find like for myself is when I get in the gym, I want to do the things I did when I was 22 years old or even six years ago. I want to throw up, yeah. you know, I want to walk in and deadlift 300 pounds cold because yeah. you can, you know what I mean? Oh, you probably could still do that. <laughs> yeah, but not without getting yeah. hurt. Yeah. So, so what I found is like in my like periods where I fall out of fitness and get back in is like, I try to go back and get hurt. And now I, I feel on my own is like, I have more of a mind shift towards like, um, I don't want to give credit to anybody that wears number 12 on their Jersey, but that pliability stuff is being yeah. like a little, a little more pliable, a little injury prevention. Um, cause I am, not at all like i am yeah. stiff as a board and uh and i think that like goes a long way with being fit is be like being viable injury prevention stretching yeah. rehab rehab all that stuff and i'm terrible no, at it i terrible. think everyone i i everyone gets humbled at some point where you realize like earlier in your your career in life like you can just you can like you know you can walk on and just dominate and then walk off and no stretching and now it's hard for me to admit that i'm not at that point <laughs> that yeah. and that's that's yeah. exactly yeah. what it that's exactly it yeah. is like i have so to every time i go back to the gym i'm like see see somebody you know like i i, I like crossfit personally like yeah. I, I just like i enjoy it and you know you see the guy over there swinging a 70 pound kettlebell and you're like oh, i'll do that and then yeah. like a year later i'm still you know still having yeah. some upper back problems i'm like yeah. oh, that was dumb you know what i mean yeah. and just it's it's hard to have the it, it, i don't want to say hard like we a lot of us have that like alpha mentality and it's hard to have that alpha mentality and then like bring yourself back consciously and yeah. try to like ease into things and learn that you're, you know, Mike almost 40 years old and like have to like start doing things yeah, you're a little on, bit differently. You're almost on top of the hill, Will. I will fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I will fight you. I'll be sore as shit. Today, <laughs> but I will you fight won't be, you. But you won't be if you stretch out. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to stretch. I'll give you 10 Listen, minutes to stretch. I'm going to stretch. <laughs> I'm going to meet you right here at 3 yeah. o'clock. Uh, you guys are getting ready to well, fight. Well, I get a I get a handicap. You, I get like at least yeah. ten punches. Yeah. Like have you ever yeah, seen the uh, one. have you ever seen the Family Guy episode where the uh the uh the guy the, the guy like that's the pedophile and then he yeah. meets like a Nazi guy and they yeah. have like an old man fight and they're like <laughs> pull their walkers to yeah. each other and they're I like get it, and yeah. they just like end up the guy falling always, asleep. Yeah. The guy always whistles. Yeah, yeah the guy yeah. always apple sauce. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That's awesome. Anyway. No. Good, I can just episode. see you guys getting ready to fight each other, and you're like, "Hey, man, can you mind just if you crack my back real quick? Stretch out. I don't <laughs> want it. you to really get in. I want. I want to hurt you. I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> it's just looking out for each other. Uh, but yeah, no. So I very much, I very much view things now as like injury prevention, and like we'll talk a little bit more about like some of the movements um, that we do, and like you know the big the buzzword now is like functional fitness, right? Um, and what that means to me and maybe what that means to you guys, but there's, but there's been a really big shift, 
um, in the in fire service culture relating to fitness as well, um, to where maybe it's it's playing more of like a um, intentional role. I feel like a lot more firehouses now have gyms um, to where you know some agencies. I actually knew a chief officer um, that didn't want their people working out on shift because he said I want I need you to be physically ready for fire yeah, which i obviously i think that's a completely backwards way of thinking but that is. Yeah. yeah um and that's that's like still a philosophy that somewhat prevails in some places and i think that it's slowly changing so when we talk about shifting culture so um the nfpa right has taken a stance on it right so nfpa 1583 their standard on health related physical fitness programs and implementing physical fitness programs uh for agencies i think is kind of the standard bearer at this point because now you have like the, even beyond national, like an international standard. I think a lot of other countries probably look at the NFPA as like at least, oh, a, I'm sure, yeah, a standard, right? Um, a national organization saying, not only like is this good, but departments should be doing this. Like you should be offering resources for your uh, firefighters to be doing every day, whether that's stretching getting out there and moving spending some time on the treadmill doing yoga whatever it is to making sure that you know we're one preventing injury before you step on the fire ground that you're physically capable of doing the tasks that we ask you to do uh and then two that you can once you leave this place you can have a healthy career when you can move around with your kids or your grandkids without being completely broken yeah um so i i feel like that's something that has has really trended in a positive direction um, and I wrote a paper for school. Um, this is where people will probably, uh, I'll probably have to disappear into the witness, yeah. uh, my opinion on, uh, mandatory, uh, physical fitness tests for the fire service. Um, and this is something that is growing as well. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will has never yeah. made a better face on this yeah. show than he just made. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily yeah. disagree. I yeah. just, I, Barry, so I will say it's non-punitive. <laughs> yeah. But no, Barry read this paper to me and we had some, yeah. some conversations yeah. about had it. Some so. words. So, uh, well, I don't find it uh, offensive. Yeah, I think there are people yeah. that are going to want Barry in hiding. Yeah, no, and I, <laughs> I'm I'm willing to uh, to talk to those Die people because I'm, I'm yeah. physically able to maneuver around them. <laughs> <laughs> but if they land yeah. one, <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, I'll re- I'll reel them in. But anyway, so <laughs> a growing a growing trend in the country is mandatory slash annual uh, non punitive physical abilities tests. Right. I'm a big proponent of it, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and I, I will say the caveat, I'm a big proponent of it if it's done correctly. Uh, emphasis on non-punitive, right? But um, this is like kind of where I have my heart. And there's some, some large organizations. Um, so, for example, for my paper, I focused heavily on like Portland, Oregon. They have a mandatory non-punitive annual fitness test. Uh, and there's a lot more across the country that are doing it now. Um, my my hardline point is that at the end of the day, like, no one's here to be like for the the guy that's been there and done that to like fucking peer this guy out and like you can't fucking do the job anymore. You have to be in an office. Like I'm not I'm not saying that that's what we should be doing. But at the end of the day, like this is a mission oriented job, and you can either this is like the great dichotomy of me. Like this is a mission oriented job, and it's it's impersonal, and you can either do the job or you can't. And it's not about our personal feelings. It's about the person that's hanging from a third floor that we need to be able to get to. And if that person can't physically do the job anymore, then maybe we need to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, but so when I, when I, when I say I'm an advocate for mandatory physical fitness tests yearly, and I'll have you guys offer your opinion as well. So when I think of like mandatory physical fitness tests, non punitive in nature, right? There's, we all take a PAT as the, and, you know, the door to the fire service. We all have to take the PAT to demonstrate like a minimum competency, a minimum physical capability. Then you go to the fire academy. There's a good emphasis on like, hey, like doing like some daily physical training. And you don't have to do like daily physical training to be in shape. But then once you get out of the fire academy, there's nothing really, unless you're, unless the organization that you're in is like progressive and has like a physical fitness program, has one of these tests, right? There's nothing to measure you from the time you are, 21 years old to the time you're 65 like you could never take another physical fitness test again if you wanted to in some agencies right so we have no barometer of where people are so looking at some of these programs uh it's obviously done in conjunction with unions right it's something that can be bargained 
there's an incentive for insurance organizations to have healthy guys that, you know, are not, or guys and gals that are not utilizing, you know, not getting, you know, the job, like I look at it, my quickest side is like, this job will kill you if you let it, right? Mm-hmm. Physically, spiritually, morally, right? So you have to do everything that you can to like push back against that. So I think that like offering tools and resources. So if you do like a physical fitness test once a year, so for example, like Portland, right? Um, doing a physical fitness test once a year. If you, you can either choose to opt in for the members that are like grandfather, you can either choose to opt in or opt out. There's usually a monetary incentive, right? Hey, do you want to take this physical fitness bargain, right? Three grand, whatever right. it is, right? You can opt out your grandfather. And then as new members come on, like, Hey, it's you, mandatory. You got, yeah. Mandatory. You got to take the test. And the way that it's framed is not like, this isn't punitive to like peer someone out that can't perform It's to identify issues before they arise injury prevention uh, and then if they fail the test, they can choose to retake it. And like, if you fail, you like, you can retake it. And when you pass, you get the money, right. Or whatever yeah. structuring unions come to as an agreement. Right. But it also gives them the opportunity to pair them with like a physical fitness coach, a nutritionist to offer these guys and gals, like an off ramp of potentially hurting themselves in the fire ground and to offer them may, Hey, like if you commit yourself to this lifestyle, you can spend have a better quality of life with your family. Yeah. So that's why I uh, am very much for. Uh, I, I, I think there's some important points in doing that. And yeah. one is one is, um, one is is opting in for people who are grandfathered. Because, yeah. uh, listen, I, at the end of the day, it is a mission-focused job. But if we didn't do anything from the time the person was 21 till now and they're 25 years into their career we should still offer to help get them on the right track. Yeah. But like, but you know, the idea that, okay, what is, what is, it's not punitive, but if you can't pass the test, what's the, you just don't get the money. That's it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, and then, and, yeah, but, and, but the point is like, it could be whatever you want it to right. be. Right. But, like that has to be bargained with the union yeah, in conjunction what, with whether, it. whether it's calm time or, yeah. but as people come on and now it's an expected part of the job, you offer services throughout their career yeah. Not only at the time of the, of the PT test, but throughout, you know, like yeah. uh, there are programs that go to X that are out there and they give, yep. they do programs for entire fire departments. And then you, you build that culture. And then in 32 years, you have a whole yeah. different, yeah. Um, a whole different system. And then, yeah. and I think the, again, the, another important fact is that if, if somebody fails it for whatever reason, um, is that you work to get them back, you know, and, and yeah. you do that by. So like you said, nutritionists or programs it can be, or whatever. It can be done in myriad. So one of the other departments that I did for my paper they don't offer a monetary incentive. They offer time off. So if you come yeah. in and take the test, pass or no pass, you show up and show the effort. You get essentially like an administrative day. You get 12 hours off like when you need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's like yeah. at least incentive to get guys and gals in the door. Yeah. I will. I, this is my opinion. Yeah. I don't have anything to work towards right now. I'm not training for a tournament. I'm not doing anything. So I... I Unless I just want to be in shape, I have I have no incentive, right, to, right. to work towards something. I do have an incentive if I know that every year, January one through January eight is our annual annual physical. mandatory physical right. whatever, right? Assessment. Yeah. And then, so it's like thought. you know that come October, November, December or whatever, yeah. guys are gonna be like, That's coming up, all right. I got to get moving. I got to get moving. I right. got to get moving. And even if it's something that only motivates guys for a few months out of the year it's to kind of get me. moving, you know, like there's gonna, you're going to gain traction on that eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, that's, it's just something to work towards. Right. And like whether, you, whether there's a monetary, um, incentive, incentive yeah. or, or anything that's that like, just, just not failing or not being, yeah, worse pride, than you pride. were last year, yeah. just being better than you were yesterday or whatever. I think that will be enough for most people yeah, to get moving. And I, I think like your life and your physical fitness should be its own incentive. But the fact is that we're human and yes. and things get in the way and you drop out of motivation and it waxes and wanes. I, I actually had this conversation with uh, one of the guys at my station Um Schman smart we'll call him again yeah um and he he said you know it's not enough to be not enough to be motivated you have to be driven like it, it has to be something that you want to have and not everybody has that drive especially at different points in their life so creating motivation is 
an incentive is it can be good for those people that need it you know yeah and it can even serve as a barometer right from year to year to where you can be like you know first year you take it you're doing it with flying colors like most people when they're younger right and then as you get older like you can start to notice like like oh like i'm you know um, the stair climb is, isn't as easy as it used to be. So like maybe, you know, when I come in on shift, I'll spend a little more time on the stair climber. So it's yeah. like, it's almost like similar to like the cancer screenings, like early intervention. Yeah. Like you can start to be like, Hey, I'm feeling a little bit more winded. The department offers, you know, and I'm, I know some, I didn't move around as much as I could last year. The department has a nutritionist and like they use O2X or whoever, like a fitness coach. That's the, you know, his contract. Yeah. To like, hey, you guys, you, you know, do you have any workouts you can recommend for this? And be like, oh yeah, here you go, John. You know what I mean? Like, and also it's, it's good because it, it sets up the difference between like expectation and reality, right? Mm -hmm. Where you think you're going to go in the fire ground and beast it. And then you go on the stair climber for five minutes. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to need to spend yeah. a little bit of more time yeah. on this guy. Yeah. There was a uh, one guy, there was one guy who hammered on about this and he was one of the guys that, uh, did our day zero and, uh, and then he worked out with us a few times too. Yeah. I forget what his name was, but, um. He said it in your career. You're gonna come across guys who are like, oh, when the when the time comes, if I need to do it, I'll be able to do it in the moment. And it was like, and he just looked at all of us and he went, "No, you can't." Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, and then yeah, we we said like it. Mark and Jelly. No, no, it was. Yeah. Um, I forget his name. Like uh, dark hair, younger, in his forties. Yeah. But he, but it was one of those things. He, it was uh, like we've said it a few times on this. You don't. You don't rise to the level of the occasion. You fall yeah. to the level of your training. You remember when right? I got in the argument with the guy at the fire academy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't going to share the story. I'll share it. So this is like the Barry's hard edge. <laughs> I got challenged. Um, so I would say like fire academy-esque, but before that I was probably in the best shape of my life. Yeah. Like I'm still in good shape, but I spent, and I was in the best shape of my life because I worked really fucking hard. Right. Um, and we were at the fire academy, um, and we were doing like a like the release run, where it was like a CrossFit esque workout, um, and it was like, hey, you had to like run the tower. It was towards the end of the academy. You had to like run the tower. Yeah. You had to like do the kettlebell, like wall uh, wall slams, do like a couple other things, and we we're like getting. It was I I don't I wouldn't say his name anyway, but I can't even remember. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, so like we start like running and like there was no instruction. I was like, Hey, is this like, as a, it was like towards the end for like a fun, like CrossFit workout. Yep. And I was like, I asked him, I was like, Hey, is this like a, at your own pace? Or are we doing this as a group? And he turned around <laughs> and was like, I forget what, I was like 76. And he's like, why do you think you, he's like, you think you're fucking faster than these 76? And I was like, Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so dude, yeah, yeah. Call, like I have my very alpha moments and I was yeah. like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> and he dude so he goes he yeah. goes fucking show me so i was like oh dude afterburners <laughs> are on now homie so i fucking destroyed that course <laughs> right <clears throat> i was probably two full cycles ahead because at that point it was like physical capability and like i'm gonna i'm gonna kill you. you yeah um and then i finished and i went back for the last man and finished with the last man right and then afterwards he gave this speech and was like, hey, like, it's not about fucking individual performance. Like, firefighting is a fucking team sport. It doesn't matter what one fucking guy can do. It matters what everyone can do. So it was clearly, like, targeted at me. Yeah. And it was, like, in a group huddle. So after, I was like, hey, I was like, can I, can I talk to you? Like, permission to speak freely? <laughs> uh, and he's like, yeah. And I was like, I wasn't disrespectful, but I was like, I perform at the level that I perform at because I fucking work hard yeah. every day. I was like, you called me out. I asked if this was like free run or as a group and you fucking came back at me and said show me so i fucking showed you <laughs> yeah. you got embarrassed yeah. and i was like Dude. i was like yeah, don't i, I was like i know exactly because he i think he, i think he said i was skipping too he said i was skipping i was like i've never skipped a workout in my life it was the same guy who i it was i don't remember who it was I, I always, when I think about it, I always feel like it was me just because I, I knew like we, it, most of us could have beat him. But it was like, maybe it was like Marath. Is it Marath? Is that his last name? Uh, I wouldn't say his Is name. Is it McGrath? No, no, no. Oh, Corey? Corey. Corey, yeah. I don't remember. It was, someone, it was someone who was in yeah. shape, right? Yeah. And the guy was like, I'll do more push-ups than you any day. Right? Yeah. And we're like out in the drill yard. Yeah. And we're all like, okay. So yeah. like we line up to do push-ups yeah. with him and he fails at like, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. 20. Yeah. And we're like. 
45. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but I just did a thousand push ups, yeah. you know? Yeah. And just like embarrassed. Thousand one. Yeah. You know, just like that embarrass the guy. But it, whatever. I mean, it, it was it, yeah. it was his way of trying. Uh, yeah. It was his way of just trying to like motivate this people have. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't understand. Sometimes digress. you get the. Uh, yeah. I digress is right. Yeah. <laughs> people anyway. get a little power and then they. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. So, I think going back to like being. Uh, there's a couple of things that I think a mandatory physical fitness test does really well. One that gives you a good barometer for like personnel status, right? Two, ensuring like a minimum standard of performance, right? We have to have one. Like at the end of the day, like as much as I'd love like every member to stay on and it'd be like a kumbaya thing, like we have a mission and it's a no fail mission. And like if we're not meeting it, like sorry, like you gotta cut slack somewhere. Um, two, identifying areas of improvement, right? Early. So you can be like, Hey, you know, like I'm not doing as well as I did setting realistic expectations of performance. Cause there's plenty of days I like, you know, like we go to the gym and we're like, yep. Doing kettlebell swings at 70. No, I'm not. Right. Mm. So setting realistic expectations, uh, and then department culture. Right. So I think I have a lot of respect, re- a lot more respect for the guy or gal that comes in and maybe is totally out of shape, but shows up and is trying Mm -hmm. and if they fail i could give two shits if they fail right because they're there they're willing to humble this up show Mm -hmm. up they're not afraid of failing they're gonna improve improve. yeah Yeah. versus the guy that's a stud that thinks he's too fucking good for it yeah like i would rather have the have the person those well like we learned in past episodes right those are the diamond dozen guys yeah Yeah. right yeah there's there's more attitudes attitudes important too there's, there's more to it yeah and if the if the department culture states this is something that's important to us being physically fit like you said johnny like eventually that culture is gonna bleed into over time right you can have guys like opt in if they want to but eventually that just becomes the department culture that we value right people that are healthy and in shape Mm -hmm. and the department's gonna invest in you and in you and Mm -hmm. me as a member right so yeah yeah. so we'll transition now into uh the big thing uh functional fitness right so everybody's heard of it Everyone kind of has an, a different opinion on like what functional fitness is, you know, like what constitutes being functional, like as far as like what workouts, right? So the actual like definition, uh, well, this is also one guy's definition, right? Uh, but also the definition from the Mayo Clinic is very similar. Um, and if you like mayonnaise, um, they're the authority on that. So, Mayo um, Clinic. but anyway, so. Long story short, right? So functional fitness is working out in such a way that prepares you for real life movements and scenarios. So functional fitness for a uh, police officer is going to be different than functional fitness for a firefighter. So it's all kind of like relative. Or a golfer and a golfer person yeah. that plays football. Yeah, right? So it prepares you for the real life movements that you can expect to be doing in your job. It's functional, right? So when I made my, I made a little list here of like workouts that I try to do. These are pictures, um, from like different honestly like different phases of like my fitness career Uh, and i still try to do stuff pretty similar right but i try to come up with as many workouts i still will do like the big three right so i still will deadlift i still will bench just because i like benching um so i guess the big four uh squat and overhead uh and overhead press i still can't squat worth a shit but i'm I'm there trying right (laughs) um but i can always deadlift. this guy that fails but he shows up yeah i'm I'm showing up i'm there (laughs) showing myself doing it but i try and build workouts and i think that when we talk about functional fitness we should be building workouts that replicate fire ground movement right and we do a lot of unconventional movement on the fire ground that puts us at a higher predisposition for getting hurt so you have to do that stuff in training you can build up core strength be used to those unconventional movements right so lifting, dragging, crawling, climbing, uh, hoisting, pulling things, carrying things, unbalanced weight distribution, right? So if you're carrying something on one side and getting used to being in those positions. So like I will sandbags or we've talked about sand. I don't know if it was on the show, but like crawling with a sandbag, right? And then I, w- I will usually do like a 50 foot segment. So uh, we'll post these pictures up. Um, but on the right hand side, this was at my old gym. I would try and set up like a very unconventional fitness scenario. So I would start with, uh, ball slams and then I would do, um, I'd grab those kettlebells and I would walk. I'd probably, uh, I'd probably do push ups first knowing me. I do push ups and then I would walk slowly and controlled over each of those objects. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Nick, you said ball slams and Nick uh, got excited. Uh, started that's laughing. That's and right. I, I can't look yeah, at him now. Yeah. I just always wondered why I never went to the gym. Yeah. And the reason is because I don't want to have my balls. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Jesus. 
<laughs> Unreal. He was making eye contact yeah. with me. Uh, stop making eye contact. I was trying. Both of you. The, I was the trying. two of you. The two of you. <laughs> it's so funny, man. The two of you. The two you guys do have these little innuendos all the yeah. time. I know. It's just I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> manipulating over um, obstacles, right? So, I would carry those over both, like, varying heights. Uh, and then I would do that unconventional weight distribution where I would carry them slowly one at a time over. Then I had, I would, I don't know if you can see it, the rope, I would pull the rope and then I'd either do like slams uh, or I would lift the tire and do tire flips, stuff like that. So I would just try and make the workouts as unconventional as possible um, to kind of replicate that. Or similar to like we talked about with the, um, um, the bag, the sandbag, yeah. yep. like just crawling on the floor and pulling that through your center mass yep. of like pulling a victim, right? Mm -hmm. Those are smokers. It's a crazy good workout. Crazy good workout. And it's all unconventional movements that are conventional for our job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then the picture, I used to work out behind ladder two and I you can't do it on the new one, but I would literally just grab it and do pull-ups off of that. And then I do like kettlebell snatches or whatever, cleans uh, poorly. Not a lot of weight there, as you can tell, Will. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't take a lot so you don't need a full gym and i'll talk a little bit ab about that later but the point being uh, functional fitness to me is not going to be the same thing as functional fitness to someone that works in a warehouse or does something else right so just trying to create movement um that replicates your job and to me at the end of the day like i'm again i'm no expert like i've just dabbled in a little bit of different stuff uh and i've you know i will go back to different things at different times but for me, it's very much about just getting out there, getting, getting moving, right? I'm not doing big weight anymore, making sure I have good core strength. Uh, I actually, I'm going to pop out. We'll, we'll, we'll show these um, on the website. But when I'm traveling, uh, I do workouts. Um, here, let me hop in here so everyone can see. Let's see if it'll work. It's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. Where's the cloud? Where's the cloud? So I, I tried really hard to download these pictures, but it wouldn't let me. Um, so I'm just going to play the videos for you guys. So, uh, guns, so this was me traveling. Guns, guns, Barry's kid, guns. Yeah. Jumping out of planes. Jumping out of planes. Uh, so I'll, p I'll throw these up. And again, like I'm not a standard bearer of anything, but these are like workouts that I like to do now that I feel like, so this is when I was down, I was at Fort McCoy uh, and I didn't have access to a gym every day. Uh, and I'm currently not banned from playgrounds in Wisconsin. So I was able to use it. Um, so just like getting out there and doing movement, right? So I'll go to the next one. Obviously you guys see this one. This one I thought was cool. It's just unconventional working on balance. I would literally just walk back and forth on the pole and I thought I had good balance. And I was like, man, it's a lot harder than I thought, right? So just like moving. It's kind of like the time you tried to grind that rail and just yeah, eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't take a lot. Like you don't need much. So I'd literally just climb over this thing, go back over the other side, do some more push ups, climb over, right? And that like repetition over time uh, created a pretty good workout. I was outdoors. I like being outdoors when I can, right? Um, monkey bars, right? You d it doesn't need a lot, but like it gets you moving. It gets you using your body in like in an unconventional way. Um, so I didn't have Remember access. Remember when we just did those so easily? <laughs> yeah. This actually shredded my hands, believe well, it or not. You know, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, th actually, uh, I, I listened to that on uh, like a Joe Rogan podcast about like there's supposed to be a lot of benefit in just hanging and swinging from stuff because yeah. it's un like when people have frozen shoulders, just yeah. doing stuff like that is like good preventative for it yeah. and then it's also supposed to be like decent treatment for it so it's just we don't do that stuff anymore but that's no. as like if we evolve from primates they say that's like right. that's actually like such a natural movement for us that we get yeah. away from it's supposed to be really yeah. healthy yeah so like i said i'm you know i'm not the standard bearer but the, i just try to get moving and i think that's the important thing like that i want to communicate to people like you you know like fitness for you like you don't have to be a beast you don't have to be in the gym every day it's just like trying to lead a healthy lifestyle get moving trying to prevent injury uh and have a good yeah. career where that you can enjoy inside and outside <coughs> of the firehouse move around a little bit enjoy the journey of it yeah, yeah. journey's got to be a low slow it's a it's a long slow climb to the top that's yeah. that's what it's got to be and you have to mentally prepare for that yeah 
Well, so, you have to mentally prepare for the fact that I'm not 18. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You got to mentally prepare that you can't. I don't run a 4'7", 4'6", 40, and can jump 30-plus <laughs> inches. And, yeah. You know what I mean? I think my vertical leap has shrunken down to probably about 12 inches. Yeah. yeah. That's, this is so embarrassing. Probably that, it's probably <laughs> uh, So kind of the linchpin to success on the fire ground. Uh, so this is patent pending. I was very proud of myself for coming up with this, right? So everyone's familiar with the, the fire tetrahedron, right? All the processes and interactions that are necessary for a fire to start, right? But I called it the action tetrahedron, right? So what's necessary for a fire to go out? Never really talk about that other than, I guess, water, right? <laughs> right? Cooling the environment. Right? But seriously, like, for a fire yeah, to go yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Breaking I guess the there's chain a sci- reaction. Yeah, I guess there's a scientific. <laughs> removing it's, the fuel. It's just removing one of those. Yeah, remove one of the... Yeah, I'm glad you could yeah. learn something today but, on the podcast, yeah. Barry. <laughs> However, we've never talked yeah. about how to put fires yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, but Barry. you're not going nice. to be able to do. You're not going to be able to remove one uh, if you remove one of these from the other side, right? So, in my cool action tetrahedron, right? So, capability being physical, like f- being in the physical sense, right? If you're not physically, I I don't even view this as like just putting the fire out. It's like doing the com- job. Yeah, doing the job, right? Are you physically capable of doing the task you've been assigned? If not, the task is not going to be complete. Without, not without being out. non-functional. Yeah, without being non-functional. Are you competent? Are you trained? Right? Are you trained and competent? Because if you can, like, again, any if you remove any of these, I'll go through them first, right? So capability being physical, competence being trained in that task, leadership being effective, and communication being a coordinated effort. If you think about it, if you remove any of these, the other half of the, the fire tetrahedron or whatever incident isn't going to work, Right? You can be competent and have effective leadership. If you're not physically capable of doing it, it's not going to get done and it's not going to be get, get done in a safe manner, right? If you have physical capability, effective leadership, but you're not competent, not going to happen. If you have leadership, competence, and capability, but you're not doing that as a coordinated effort to get the mission accomplished, it's either not going to get accomplished or not going to be accomplished effectively. So that's how I view um, kind of things getting done. Uh, and why I put fitness as one of the linchpins, right? So you can have effective coordination and a coordinated effort on the fire ground. You can have trained and competent firefighters and effective leadership giving you tasks. If you're not physically capable of doing the task you've been assigned, not happening. Right. So I'm paying patent it, pending. I'm I'm paying Trade, it, trademark. I'm, trademark. Trademark. Yeah, trademark. I'm paying attention. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But all I could look at on the screen is that word linchpin. And I feel like that word crept into your brain and then you built this whole conversation <laughs> yeah, on the I word did, linchpin. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I was on a walk that's the a other good, day. That's a good strategy. Yeah. yeah it's I was a good strategy. So I was on a walk the other day talking about or thinking about like effective leadership. Uh, and then I kind of came from there. I want you guys to know, although, Barry, I will say actually this is pretty baller. Yeah. I like it. it. And it's, it's, cool. and it's original. A lot yeah. of thought. But it, Barry was so excited this morning trying to clip art this tetrahedron yeah, yeah, together yeah. for the <laughs> for yeah. the uh for the show I'm but i but i actually I, I honestly like i think you're onto something here yeah, no, it's job talks trademark this is uh, yeah this is uh, like the way you put that is is very real you can have three of those things and not have the fourth one and you're not going to have the mission success mm-hmm. and it's just it's for i know there's so much that falls I know. Those, <laughs> that's oh what i'm God. saying i know barry you're already right. the hero right? right we know you're the most yeah. physically fit you're the smartest yeah. we know all right no. we all know it no. still has the smallest mustache on set yep so that's has, true that's true yeah do you guys know among other things yet? Yeah. Anybody out there? I did. Huh? I did. I saw it in the it, picture please. of Will at the fire. Yesterday. Like and subscribe to my mustache. You know when I'm and on long <laughs> when I'm on long walks, I'm not really thinking about leadership this time of year. Yeah. This time of year, it's hunting season, so yeah, the I only do. thing I can think of every day when I wake up is shooting deer. Yeah, yeah. but if you go to like, hang on, 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 connect it. If you don't have the physical capability to get in the woods, you're not going to shoot a deer. If you don't have the competence to know what you're doing to shoot the bow. You're not going to do it. Yeah, you could lose an eye. If you don't have the leadership, if you don't tell those deer (laughs) that they need to come by your (laughs) If you don't lead yourself into the woods. If you don't lead yourself into the woods. And And if you don't don't have effective communication, good grunt calls, bleat call. Yeah. Maybe you rattle. Maybe you do a snort wheeze. I was wondering how you're going to accomplish that one. (laughs) Yeah, you did it. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, So anyway, patent pending. Uh, And then the last thing uh, that I wanted to talk about before, I mean, I don't really have a question today. I'll probably come up with it on the fly. Um, oh, I forgot the game. Sorry. Okay. A quick aside. I, we, yeah. uh, our neighbors um, and ourselves, we play. Um, we go over and do like game nights, yeah. and uh, we usually do like murder, like the boxes. They come in a set, and you like solve a mystery or like murder clue? or whatever. 
It's pretty fun. Um, is that like Clue? But last weekend we played one. It's called Descent, and it basically was like Clue. Here's it's not Clue, Barry. Right. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Just listen. Right. <laughs> um, no, they they're actually pretty cool. You you can subscribe to them, and they send you like a different. Okay. Like like this person cool. was murdered, or this With person was convicted. In the ballroom. No, not like that. Oh. Like here's like the evidence. Here are some pictures, and oh. you have to like l- like actually look through shit That's and build cool. a case and like figure out if you're right. Um, we played this other one. It's called uh, Descent, and it's basically like it gives you like hot dogs or sandwiches, and you flip it over, and you have to argue. Uh, for or against uh, and i was gonna bring the game in and just use that as our question that's a good of the one day. that's a good, good one but good. that's okay i'll bring it next time that's i forgot it that's a good one it was will with the two and a half on the third floor it was just will with the 240 <laughs> <laughs> one mile away um, um so my last uh my last soapbox uh is access to equipment versus motivation and creativity um so you can have so many Perry pictures yeah so you can have access to arguably a crossfit gym at your facility where you know we're lucky uh, in cambridge this, we have this we is have, yeah this is yeah our, one, no this is our, our yeah, this is our headquarters yeah. gym which is arguably a crossfit gym nice. oh yeah um but yeah. a lot of people would be like well barry that's great like but i don't have access to anything uh these two pictures were me in africa where i had didn't have access to fucking anything yeah. and i chopped down a tree uh, and I made a squat rack. It was an endangered tree. An endangered, yeah. yeah. This is ruined an entire yeah. ecosystem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I we so I don't I don't buy that excuse. Like because you can just do body well, weight. Well, it's all yeah, plyometrics. Yeah, plyometrics, right? So and also like don't get don't get down on yourself. Like if you don't have access to stuff, like get cre- it's an opportunity to motivate yourself. Get creative. Plenty of body weight. Yeah, stuff body here. weight. Use the internet. There's so much stuff out there. Uh, as resources that you can use that exist to your benefit. So I'd encourage you, no matter what your circumstances, like I got it just as good of a workout with my... Actually, that was like harder than squatting because the the water jugs would move yeah. uh, and you had to have a lot of core strength. Yeah. So I think cool. we weren't talking necessarily about physical fitness when this was months ago, but Johnny, you were talking about it. As we talk about like as a society, we're all or nothing. So yeah, like, it's true. we're always like, oh, n- January 1st, I'm going to start and I'm going to go 100% with yeah. my eating routine, my gym routine, blah, right. blah. And there are places in the world that don't have that same mentality. And they're just like, well, I'm just going to do 10 push ups a day. And while we wait a month and don't get anything done, because we're waiting for that perfect opportunity to go 100%. They did 300 they push-ups. They did 300 push ups yeah. or they ran whatever. So it, it, it really yeah. is just like get out and do something. Something. That's all we're, that's all I'm, you know, yeah. saying. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to talk about, there's a lot of resources out there. These are two um, that have really resonated with me over the years. Um, one is Firefighter Functional Fitness. I just use it as a reference. I keep it in my little library, and this will also go up in our library. Actually, both of these will go up in Second our Jim Moss book up in our library. Second Jim Moss book up in our library. Yeah, so Dan, uh, Dan Kerrigan and Jim Moss, uh, both professional firefighters. Um, Jim Moss, we're coming for you for an interview, buddy. Yep, yep I'll comes. be watching. He, um, oh, he's definitely watching. Who isn't? Yeah, as, as sure. well as John Sparrow. Would sure. love to have uh, have him on as well. Is he related but to Jack Sparrow? I'm just Sparrow. I'm just kidding. Um, but they... Barry so, got so mad. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, uh, Barry got real mad. Not Barry, just idiot. Um, idiot. These two I've used the most. So I use Firefighter Functional Fitness. as a, just, as a, It's a picture book, so it's great for me. Uh, <laughs> so it has a lot of pictures of like varying workouts that replicate fire ground activities. If, I, if I'm... My workout's getting a little stale. I'm like, I'm doing the same thing a bunch of times. I'll just open up the book and find something that I like. Uh, and then Fit to Fight Fire, John is familiar with. I'm sure you're familiar with as well. I've been a big Fit to Fight Fire fan uh, from when Fit to Fight Fire was um, very, like pretty grassroots. Um, they have a bunch of books. They have a book, obviously, Mindset. Uh, they have Backstep. Uh, and they're very quick reads. They're like 80 pages, 100 pages. Uh, so Mindset, I just wanted to... Mindset isn't specifically like geared towards uh, fitness, uh, but obviously having a good mindset, there's fitness incorporated in that. Uh, but as a resource, Fit to Fight Fire, just their message, uh, and those guys are actual beasts. Mm. Um, so those are two things that I've looked at over the years that I was actually really sad. So John Sparrow, if you're ever listening to this, Kaya ate my Fit to Fight Fire hat that they don't make anymore. Oh, damn. I was really upset. I've had that hat for like seven years. I was really sad. Um so maybe they can do. Is it that better. why you were so angry so when maybe, I made my maybe joke? Maybe yeah. send Barry yeah. one yeah. of those hats that you have laying around. <laughs> but definitely, these are so these are great resources. And whatever resource works for you, that's the one you should use, right? I mean, these there, are just there's simple. so many apps online yep. and yeah. 
that I, I, you know, a lot of that stuff, internet and apps and everything else, and it's like almost an overload of information. And it's just yeah. really simple. You know, you don't have to run. You can walk. Yep. Get on the treadmill for thirty minutes. And, you don't well, have and to. And arguably, lift. you burn fat if like yeah. your goal is fat loss. Like sure. walking does a better job. It, do some squats. Do some sit ups. Do some push ups. Like it, it, it's yeah. just simple. Just simple stuff. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You know? Yeah. yeah. They don't even have to do push-ups on the ground. You can lean up against the bumper of the ladder and just do like, like those like wimpy push-ups. Yeah. I don't want to call them wimpy push-ups. They're not wimpy. There's stigma to it. It's yeah. but like just move. Yeah, just move. Yeah. It, I do or, them all the time. Or yeah. do yo- I, Like I've been flirting with the idea of actually going to yoga because I Dude, feel like some, I need it. If you do that, yoga if you chat. do that, film it so we can laugh at you. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> dude. I I am a I am. Don't laugh, Nick. I'm very stiff. I'm thinking yoga is cool, uh, but I just want to see you do it and laugh. That's well, all. I mean, I want it. I want professional it. <laughs> football player. Like a lot of people do yoga, yeah. and they're. I want. I want, I want. Will. To it's hard. Have me. you yeah. ever like I've yeah, done like I've a done. yoga class, and oh, I was I have, like, yeah, no. Oh my god, this hurts so much. Yoga's yeah, legit, it's, dude. It's it's terrible. Terrible. No question about it. Yeah, it's terrible. No question. I just feel like you'd be ripping ass in the yoga class the whole oh, time. Oh yeah, but yeah. so would everybody else. You so clear okay. clear out the room. So my question of the day is for the audience: What are you guys doing for workouts? Um, we'll I'll post the question of the day. Uh, in our discussion group, right? But it's for the audience. What workouts do you guys like to do at home at the firehouse that you feel either replicates, you know, functional tasks on the fire ground or gets you motivated and pre- prepared for the day? So that's that's my question. Uh, I know what I do. Um, I'll share it, uh, and I hope that you guys share it too. So without further ado, Jeff. don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another one. With another one. Surprise. Yeah. All right, guys. Share all this with your friends. Let them know what a good job we're doing out here. Yeah. Berries. Action tetrahedron. Yeah. Action Action tetrahedron. tetrahedron. Hashtag Barry. Job talks out.